everyone, Gara here and welcome to a brand new deck tech video. Today I'm gonna talk about Jade Druid and without further ado, let's get right into it. So here's the deck list as you guys can see and first I will go over the deck list and then I will tell you why I'm playing this version and I'm gonna talk a bit about all the cards that I've been testing and yeah, why I decided to go for this version. So let's kick this off with Double Innovate, just a very staple card, one of the strongest cards in Hearthstone since the beginning. It's just an incredible acceleration tool and now the card got indirectly buffed by the card that is called Ultimate Lulification. It's just the strongest card in the game right now and you have pretty much no drawback with accelerating because you will just draw so many cards once you hit 10 mana and this is just super super strong. Jade Idol, uh, another just a staple card in a Jade Druid deck. You play all these Jade cards that you can play. The Aya, Double Jade Behemoth, Double Jade Spirit, Double Jade Blossom and the Jade Idols. And um, now you have even more reason to keep the Jade Idol in your starting hand because some people play the Skull King Geist. And yeah, so you just keep, the, keep it in your hand. It's one of the highest win rates cards in Hearthstone if you have it on turn one. So so many reasons to keep it turn one. It makes every other card in your deck stronger. Uh, once you play a Jade Idol turn one, which is your strongest play usually as a Druid, uh, you can save your ramp after, for afterwards. And yeah, it just makes your Jade Spirit stronger, your Jade Behemoth, Aya, and so forth, if you hit the one mana Jade Idol. So very, very powerful card. And yeah, one of the cards you definitely keep in, I would say every mulligan. Wild Growth. Super, super strong again, another staple card. You usually mulligan for Wild Growth, Jade Idol, and Jade Blossom, and Innovate. Just so many cards you can mulligan for. This speaks definitely for a strong deck uh, that you have a lot of cards you can keep. Against aggressive decks, you can keep also the Wrath and Fell Rage and MC Tech. So, a lot of cards you can hit that are very powerful in the early game. So, this is a really powerful indication for this being a very strong deck or this is going to be a strong deck so double mc tag yeah uh, people were confused but the guys that have watched my stream today they actually got to witness the power of mc tag so let me show you guys some stats real quick so as you guys can see this is what i faced the whole day today is crazier than any any other day since the release of Knights of the Frozen Throne, I've been facing at least 50% Druid uh, on ladder, which is a crazy amount. And today was 60% Druid, so I almost only faced the mirror, which is crazy. This Paladin percentage was even higher. So for the most part, I faced Paladin, which and every Paladin was Murloc Paladin, and Druid. And almost every Druid is Agro Druid. And the rest of the Druid is Jade Druid. So I only faced mirror and counters. Agro Druid, Murak Paladin and Jade Druid and I was still climbing with a positive win rate which really speaks for a very powerful deck. So MC Tech was a very important card. So when I started playing, uh, I was playing without MC Tech and I was losing many many games. I was around 40% win rate. Since I faced almost only Agro, I included MC Tech. I was thinking, shall I include Hungry Crabs for the Paladin matchups? But those are really bad against Agro Druid. If I play Golaka Crawlers, that would be, on the other hand, really bad against Murloc Paladin. So I decided to go for a card that is good versus all aggressive decks. Except maybe Pirate Warrior, but I'm not really facing any Pirate Warriors because they get also countered by the Agro Druid and by the Jade Druid usually. So yeah, MC Tech, a very powerful card. Uh, if you know it's an aggressive deck, you can even keep it. Uh, because the aggressive decks right now are crazy, they get very wide on the board very early, so you can even MC Tech on curve, and MC Tech can just minion the game. Uh, yeah, it's basically battle cry, kill an opponent's minion, and then summon a minion for free mana. This is like as strong as it gets. So very, very powerful tech card. Was helping me a lot to win a lot of the games, and it definitely increased my win rate up to 60%, I would say. My overall win rate is 55%, as you saw, but that is just because I started off really, really weak. So Fenrir, another very powerful card, um, doesn't require any explanation, just goes very well with all the other cards. Now even with the Malfurion, Jade Spirit, another stable card, Maya Keeper. I was running two Maya Keepers, but I felt like it was a little bit too much. I decided to go for one, for one Spellbreaker, a lot of people run two Spellbreakers. I can see why, but it, I really like Spellbreaker only against Paladin. So it is also like a, a little bit of a situational card, so if the opponent 
if you play the Jade Druid Mirror and you will face a lot of Jade Druid Mirrors, uh, Spellbreaker is not that good. It's still fine to silence the Aya, uh, but usually it's better to just play your own Aya. Uh, it's just a very nice tech card to have. I wouldn't mind if you guys decide to go for two Spellbreakers. I'm going for one for now and he's doing quite well and so does the Maya Keeper. Playing a lot of ramp is getting really rewarded if you run double infestation. Uh, swipe another very staple card, nourish another very staple card in every Jade Druid since the beginning of time. Most of the time you just nourish for mana crystals now. As soon as you have infestation you can just use every card for ramp and it's just super rewarding. Uh, it's just super powerful. If you don't have the infestation oftentimes I would consider saving the nourish for drawing cards. Aya just staple, Jade Behemoth staple, Malfurion is just a very powerful card. Yeah, now that we don't run Earthen Scales and we are not running two Fair Rages, the healing can be really nice sometimes. So yeah, Malfurion so is also a very flexible card, very powerful to ramp out as well. A very good as a stabilization card versus aggro, the hero power is very good versus aggressive decks. And just, yeah, overall a very solid card to run for 7 mana and we have nothing in that mana slot. Primordial Drake, I was running a Black Knight sometimes, I was running very different cards in this slot. Um, I'm going for Primordial Drake just because of the increased popularity of Agro Druids lately. Against Agro Druid this is like a very good stabilization card, also versus Living Mana. So, um, yeah, powerful card versus Agro, not so good versus Control. I would definitely not recommend playing two Primordial Drakes, I've tested that as well. I didn't like it too much because if you're ahead in tempo, which you oftentimes are with that much ramp, Primordial Drake is really bad if you have the board. And if you run two, sometimes you're like stuck with them. And this is why I run the Lich King. Lich King is, in my opinion, the second strongest card in the game to uh, ramp out. Ultimate Infestation has to be the first one, it's just so powerful. Uh, Lich King can just single-handedly win you the game. Oftentimes it goes unanswered because you go wild growth into like double inner weight. Lich King which is just the nuts and your opponent can't kill it. Then yeah, you just win and oftentimes you can get so many good cards that are good for Druid. Yes, some are bad but in general like even a, a death coil is insane. If you get a bot clear it's insane. If you get a plus two buff that makes your hero, uh, card, cards immune, that one is insane and yeah, it's just super powerful and on top of it it has taunt against aggressive decks yes it is an 8 mana 8 8 taunt uh, which is good if you ramp it out and it can give you a card that wins you the game so i absolutely love the lich king and ultimate infestation the bonkers so this is the deck list i hope you guys will have as much success as i and I will also show you some games but first let me show you how how I would rate this archetype so I would absolutely rate this archetype tier 1. So in theory, uh, I would have rated it tier 1 without even playing it. Just from the ladder experience, there's so many Jade Druids. And I rated Jade Druid tier 1 in Ungoro already from a competitive standpoint because almost every tournament strategy evolved around targeting Jade Druid or banning Jade Druid after Quest Rock got nerfed. And right now, it got buffed in an incredible way and I predicted J3 to be tier 1 before the expansion came out and it feels like a tier 1 deck so I was 100% correct on that prediction. The biggest buff for J3 is the ultimate infestation but not just because it is so powerful, you have two more deck slots in your deck. Because of the ultimate infestation you don't have to run the auctioneer and the earthen scales and they're very clunky and very situational oftentimes on their own. They're very bad standalone cards. Ultimate Infestation is a very powerful standalone card and you have room for two more slots. So we can run cards now with like Mire Keeper to get more ramp. We can play cards like Spellbreaker which are great versus Paladin. We can play late game ca taunt cards like Malfurion and Lich King. This is really powerful because this card covers the healing it covers removal, it covers card draw, an insane amount of card draw. Because of ultimate infestation, we don't even have to run additional card draw in, in addition to auctioneer, just because we draw so many cards. That card alone pushes the deck, in my opinion, to a tier 1 deck. Uh, super incredibly powerful. When I played it, I, as I told you guys, I faced only aggro... I only faced Agro Druid, Murloc Paladin and Jade Druids on ladder and I was still climbing with a positive win rate. This shows you how powerful this deck are. The entire ladder evolves around this deck. People are playing either this deck or counters to this deck. I've never seen such a polarized uh, meta. People almost like this deck 
is pushing out every, almost every other class out of the game. I barely see any warlocks, rogues, even shamans or mages or priests, which is crazy. One of the most polarized decks I've ever seen and I've never seen such a class represented this much on ladder. Around 60% as I showed you. Even when shaman was tier 1, midrange shaman, it was around 40% of the ladder. Even with Undertaker, Hunter, it was around 45-50%. I faced up to 60% druids every single day. Crazy. And yeah, that's it. And I'm gonna show you some games and I'll be back in a second. Oh, something that is not Malfurion! I must protect I'm not facing Malfurion! I was like about to rec I, I started recording and every game was a Jade Druid Mirror and I'm like... I don't really want to show a Jade Druid Mirror, but I had six Jade Druid Mirrors in a row. So, I rogue. I faced two rogues in total and they were both aggro rogues. I mean, since Knights of the Frozen Throne. I wouldn't be surprised if he is aggro rogue. People like to play the free mana weapon and... And yeah, I'm just hitting the, as we expect, the weapon. And I'm just hitting the ramp. And it's looking good. Also have the Aya after the ramp, which is very, very nice. So even if he goes coin wild spine for the tempo. Okay, I have to kill this one. See how big he gets. He maybe goes all in. If he goes one cleave, then it's looking really bad. Uh oh. Okay, that's fine. So he's all in on this questing. It is the second idol, but in this matchup I will not need to shuffle. You always have to think, will I need, do I need to shuffle in this matchup or not? And in this matchup definitely not. Like 9-9 nine, nine jades, even like 6-6 six, six jades or 7-7 seven, seven jades are big enough. This looks like he has a one cleave. doesn't oh my god that's gonna be so insane yeah I don't know if you had a one cleave instead of the SI I would have lost this game yeah that was relatively easy I would say Ah, Malfurion, Malfurion, gotta sh show one Malfurion game. Must be preserved. I mean, I guess we keep Innovate Maya Keeper. So if he's Jade Druid, this is pretty nice. If he's Agro Druid, it's not that nice. Especially with Aya and Infestation. If he's Slow Druid, then it's good. Fast Druid is pretty bad. Because I have to get on the board. Um, yeah, I'm trying to save as many like ramp effects as possible, like coins and innovates. Coin is kind of like a no acceleration card, I would say. So I could go innovate Maya Keeper. Now I can go. Uh, I can go for uh, nourish for mana.
And the next turn, the Maya Keeper. I mean, I have the infestation. This is why you, you can play like this. It's very, very dumb. He's missing the ramp. He might have Innovate. He kept two cards. Maybe he has double Innovate. Who knows? It's not the best card to play as the first Jade, but it's like, it's still an Aya. Okay, even though it's so weird. Okay, he kept Wrath, so he kept versus Agro. Next turn, the Wild Growth will be insane. This is a super fast infestation. Like, I have the ramp, but I'm not really like snowballing on the Jades. Here's the ramp as well now. I'm not far ahead. I am definitely ahead, but not too far. Because these two swipes are like, yeah, another very bad draw. I think I keep the swipes. I don't like swipe face. Yeah, that was a very weak turn. I could have actually refed my own guy. Oh, he has infestation for sure. I still have to go for it. He went for double nourish ramp, so he definitely has it. It just costs 10 mana, this is why I like doing it. Job done. If I throw in a way, I will go for the idols. So, I can really pressure him now. I think if he goes infestation. What? That is really weak. Ten damage. Eighteen. It's lethal. Yeah, it's just bam, ramp, ramp, infestation. That's just how Druid, like, I think this is a good sh game to show how Druid mirrors go. Like, I could have gotten crushed the same way. He hits the Wycroft, Zena, wait, Jade Blossom. You go Fenro into, I can't kill it, and then he goes Nourish and then Acceleration, and now I had the crazy Acceleration tempo. I have to show at least one Jade Druid mirror, because that's like literally all I face. And yeah. And that's it for today's deck tech video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with another one. And that's it for today's deck tech video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. If you're curious to see about how I approach the deck building process and if you want to follow live the beginning of the makings of one of the new decks and the finished product you can check out my stream i'm streaming every single day link to my stream is in the description thanks so much for watching once again and see you guys tomorrow peace